Hello everyone, you're welcome back to the Wise Builders. My name is Dolapo Agoro Adeneyi. Thank you for tuning into this channel. Today I'll be talking to us about why do men cheat or reasons for adultery in a marriage. You see, most adulterers or people that um, cheat on their spouses, be it wife or women in this instance, do not want to. Most people don't set out. Some are born adulterers. What I mean born adulterers is it's a behavior that they have started. When you're still young and you're not satisfied with one girlfriend or, um, or a relationship, you end up being an adulterer. I say to, to singles that I counsel nowadays that please try and be satisfied. Don't hop from one girlfriend to the other. When you do that, you are setting unnecessary standards for yourself. Now, the major reasons why men cheat or women cheat as well is family background. I mean family background. Family background in that when you come from a wobble foundation, you find it difficult. You see, we are what life or the kind of life we lead or we've lived in the past. Psalm 11, 3 says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Most people that get eventually born again comes from a wobble foundation. And if you do not deal with that foundation, it comes to haunt you. That is, you remember 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, they new be. All things are passed away. You have to deal with these old things in your life. If you do not do with, deal with them, it comes back. Family background. People that come from a broken home, eventually, if care is not taken, end up not being able to stick. I used to know a, a, a chap that says, and when you're talking to yourself, leave me alone. That's the way my father used to live. That's the ex you can't blame such person. That's the kind of life. You see such one even bragging about it. They don't see anything wrong in it. So family background matters so much. When you want to marry, look deeply to the family you want to marry from. Not that if somebody comes from a polygamous home you run. Look at family virtues. Because some fathers that are polygamists along the line realize their faults. And they sit their children down to say to them, you cannot manage this. They tell you the risk and the evil in it. But the most around the line say family background matters. The second thing is wrong advices. As I said, a lot of people in marriages today, when things go wrong, when you seek help from stupid people, I mean stupid people, or people that do not have family values themselves. I say to people, when you advise me, I first look into your own lifestyle. I look into your marriage. Do you have family values? If you do not, I do not listen to you. Because before you can give me a medicine, I have to know that it's working on you. So wrong advices. 1 Corinthians 15 and 3 says, Be not deceived. Good, a bad complaints, spoils good manners. That is to say, if you are keeping company with stupid people, irresponsible people, you know them by the way they talk. You know them by the association. You are married, you are hanging out with single men, or you are going to club Friday, Saturday, you are not at home. You don't come home. What example are you leaving for the children? There is no way you will be going out in the night. I say to people, when you night crawl as a married man or a married woman, you are an adulterer. There's nothing you do in the night. There's nothing good that will come out of that, that um, relationship or that venture. The third one that you have to think about is role models. Are you a good role model? When people don't have good role models, if you don't have good mentors, when you want to go into marriage, or if you are in a situation like this, please, I beg of you, look for a good, not mentors that are covering up. Look and pray very well. I pray before I pick mentors. Look and pray and look for Christian mentors. People that can mentor you, that their life speaks good volume. And say to them, this is what I'm going through. These are reasons why people cheat. 
bad family background, wrong advisors, no role model. Come from a broken home. If if he commits adultery, who is he going to meet? Is it the father that that is not there? Or the mother that is not the mother that has five five husbands or that's changed several times or that is keeping one 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 woman that I used to know. I'm, I'm like, how many men will you introduce to these children as uncle? Such person, if you marry such person or you marry from such home, there's no good moral values. There are no good, good role models. The child has seen the mother and just thinks this is the best thing. The ch children have seen the father. They know their father doesn't. So when they are married to on Friday, they put on their jacket. We are going for a night clubbing. What are you going to do? Don't talk to me. Don't tell me rubbish. My father, he, there used to be, there, there was a, a, a marriage. And the, the, the man, the, 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 the woman will tell him that, don't even say that that's what my father used to do. Before one day I said to you, be, the fa your father used to do that, but does he have a good testimony? So these are things that causes and the reason for men cheating. Some are not born to cheat. Some, like I said, it's inborn. So be careful. If you are in a marriage, stop night crawling. Stop going out with these wrong friends. They will finish your life. Remember, if anything happens to you, you're on your own. If anything happens to your wife, she's on her own. Now, let's talk about way out. Most of us find ourselves, like I said, in the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Most righteous people, most Christians, we find ourselves in a wobble relationship. Things have happened. I was speaking to some people, and I said to them, Listen, how you lay your bed matters so much. Let me talk to you about way, way out. One of the things you can do for yourself is do not compromise. Last week, I said to us that I'm going to talk to us about steps to take when you find yourself in this kind of relationship. If the foundation be destroyed, you're a wise builder, remember? What can the righteous do? Do not compromise your stand. The first thing you need to do is remember who you are. That you are a child of God. I know who I am. I say to people, I do not compromise. People don't like me. When I was married, a lot of people don't like me because I did not compromise. Do not be equally yoked, unequally yoked with unbelievers. Let me tell you something. You know who you are. Peradventure, you're married, you're born again, you find yourself in this kind of relationship. The first thing they want to tell you after the first child or the second child is LGB, mother, you have your child now, you cannot go anywhere. You can go somewhere. Your life does not depend on anybody. It could be, it may, some, some of you, it's not a, adultery. It is domestic violence. You are being battered every day and you are putting Mary Kay to cover up. Don't cover up your destiny. You are a daughter of the Most High God. Scream out. Do not compromise your stand. Marriage should not make you compromise. I say to people, marriage must be enjoyed, but not endured. When you start enduring, one man used to tell his wife, the day I hear you discuss about us outside, that is the end. Let it be the end. Are you a God? That is the false voice of an abuser. They don't want you to talk about it because they know you are going to seek help. So you continue to cover up. And let me tell you, most of us Christians, especially virtuous women, we try to think that we are covering our husband's shame. You are not covering his shame. Remember, he that covereth his sin will not prosper. You do not need to go on the housetop and start screaming your husband and tell your husband is an adulterer. But you have to seek spiritual help. Don't give in to pressure. The people will not like you. When you are for the truth, they will not like you. At some point, it got to a state that I was like, what is all this? If you can't beat them, you join them. Maybe that was going to make me happy. Then when I was praying, the Lord spoke to me clearly, thou shalt not. And I stood my ground. I did not marry with a second woman. I will not allow a second woman in my marriage. Whatever it takes. I used to tell my late husband that, let it be the cause I will fight for my children. Not because of me. I've entered, but I will stand that I do not compromise. And I did not compromise. Do not compromise. Let the whole world, your in-laws hate you, your father-laws and mother-laws and every in-laws and friend-laws, let them all hate you. Stand on the word of God. Stand on the truth of the word of God. Most of the problem with us as children of God is we, don't, we do not even know the scripture. We do not know the word of God. So, 
like that person, the foolish builder that did not build on the rock. The tide will tide you. The problem and pressures of life will start pushing you to one side or the other. These ones will say, this is it, then you follow because you don't know the word of God. But if you are a wise builder, you build on the rock. Christ is the rock. So build your relationship on the rock, which is Christ. Let Christ be in your relationship. Build it on a solid foundation. If your foundation is a rock. Remember, he said, he didn't say, the, he said, the wise person, the wise man built the house on a rock. That is, you have to do a foundation. That is a rock. Then once you build on a rock, he didn't say the rock, oh, Christ is the rock. He said, build it on a rock. That is, have a very, very solid foundation. Then bring the rock into it, which is Christ. Then it will be seated and nobody can move you. Don't give in to pressure and seek spiritual help. When I mean spiritual help, seek God. You need strength from God. Have gone because of my marriage on 21 days to say, God, at that point, I moved. I said to people, when you, are, when you find yourself, move out. You can move out. Don't divorce, but well, move out. But receive strength from God. Receive a go-ahead from God. Don't ever take any step. If you move out, the man will just bring another woman in. If God does not direct you. When I moved out, the day I moved out, my husband did not sleep in the house that I left him a day. He followed me around where I was. And he was begging me for two weeks. I did not. Before we reconcile things and we, sort, we sorted things out. You need to, you need your strength yourself. Most of us are not, we are not strong spiritually. Desire the sincere meat. Stop drinking meat, milk of the word of God. And please build solidly. Seek help. Speak to counselor like I said to you. Any man that says to you, don't speak out is an abuser. Don't talk to your mother. They turn you against your mother. They turn you against your father. They don't want to see your parents in the house. They don't want to see your sibling because of what? Any man that controls your friend is an abuser. You should be free. Because even as a child of God, you should have godly friends anyways. So you should be free to seek spiritual help and the physical help. In the name of counselors, in the names of people, mentors, spiritual mentors, your pastor. I say to people, a lot of people, are in churches, they don't talk to their pastor. Why are you in the church? I can't talk to my pastor. I can't talk to you. You're wasting your time. It's your covering. It's your spiritual covering. You need to speak to him. Look for a way out. I beg of you, be a wise builder. Let me tell you something. The Bible says we are the salt of the world. That is in Matthew 5. I think it's verse 18. And it says, if the salt lose its taste, he it said it's no longer good for anything but to be trampled under feet. Most of us, we quote this scripture. Fathers, at the end of your home, you are the salt. Let me tell you an example of where you lose your saltness. When your wife looks into your face and says, you have lost your saltness. When your children start calling you, daddy, we got to talk. The head has become the tail. Your children, you are supposed to be advising your children and coming and say, what are you doing there? But when children are like that, this is not on. Dad, we can't take it. Dad, we need a word. Ah, daddy, daddy, go and change. You have disgraced yourself. You have lost your saltiness. You are no longer good for anything, but you are being trampled under feet. When people that are not up to you in church, they are calling meeting and say, hey, 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 you see, daddy, if you be, hey, we need to talk. Uh, you see this thing you are not doing, and you are doing like this there. And you have pity your finger, you have lost your saltiness. The Bible says it's no longer good. It's no longer good. May your life be good in Jesus' name. I pray for you today that the Lord will give you a heart of flesh. Please seek genuine repentance. The God of peace will mend your home. You will not die, but you will live to declare the glory of the Lord. Your life will be a testimony. Your children's children will surround your table. Please take the bold step. It takes a step and God will help you. Pray about it. Fast about it. If you can fast about it, seek help and God will help you. So that I wish to hear your testimony. I want you to call me one day and say, I listened to this and I took a, 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 a turn around. And the God of peace will help you. God bless you. Until the time we meet next, be a build, wise builder. Build wisely and your house will be solid. No tide of this world will crash you down. God bless you and remain blessed.